Welcome back to our acting analysis and tips for animators. And today it's part two of Mayor of Easttown. And I'm going to cover how a character is listening and reacting, how you would have an expected and unexpected outcome for movement, contrast in people, and a general look at character movement and set dressing in today's episode. And let's go. Part two is not that spoilery. I'm going to continue until the very end of the whole season. So I will mark spoilers if there's anything. I mean, obviously, if you haven't seen anything, anything will be a spoiler. But this is not really picking out who did what and everything. It's more about character kind of reactions and behavior and stuff like that. Now, before I continue, if you're new to this channel, hi, my name is JD and I do act analysis clips like these. I do animation analysis clips. I do rib reviews, product reviews. I do animation lectures, news, all kinds of stuff. That's the pitch. You know it at the beginning. Feel free to browse around. If you like it, subscribe so you don't miss anything. And if not, just keep watching or not. Come back later if you want. But that's that. Let's go to the clips. And the first one I want to talk about is this one. So Mare, she is interrogating this guy. And throughout, he's very flustered and obviously upset because his daughter, something happened to her again. It's kind of spoiled. It's the setup of the scene, but I don't want to spoil too much. So the main thing is that he's not really looking at her. He's got a lot of movements you can see in the eyes. He's looking maybe at her. It's more a bit to the side. And then over, that's really more at her back to the side. So it's a lot of kind of an unfocused movement. And that's my dog. Hold on, I gotta close, I gotta close the door, the dog came in. Dog. I gotta go and close the door, hold on. Like I was saying, a lot of unfocused movement and eye darts and just, you know, that's the state of the character. Until she, and you can see this here, where she kind of prepares herself, say, all right, I gotta ask a question. There's a person of the lips here. It's like, all right, well, I gotta ask, where were you? So then you got that slow look towards him and I love that little stare and you can see, bam, now he looks and stares and he goes, no, no, I was here all night. And I love this here. This is the reason why I'm showing you this. It's contrasting movement where the character can be unfocused, darting around, thinking of all kinds of stuff. And if there's something really important and the character suddenly goes and doesn't move, that's a big change in movement. So you can imagine in your timeline of movement, you have movement, movement, movement stare. So that is something to think about as you have a, a character moving all the time. When is it interesting to stop moving? And is it for a very specific moment? Now, in this case, all eyes are on him because he could be the suspect. And I like this moment here as he continues his kind of look there. And that's something that you could add. So it, as always, if you watch my clips, you know that if you have one character talking or two characters talking, it doesn't have to be the focus on them in terms of lip sync. This guy could have all the lip sync and your animation is all about this character reacting. It could also be them talking or just her or just him, whatever. But then you insert a bunch of shots like these of other people reacting and listening and looking around. Then it's just pantomime reacting to sounds. I think that could be really interesting too. And it continues on with him and his reaction and she gets, all right, I get it. She has a bit of a sizing up. You watch her eyes down, up. But then she heard what she heard and then, all right, well, and you can see that little blink here. It's like, okay, well, I heard it. It's fine. This one is a bunch of stuff and I love her. I mean, I love her in this whole show. It's so good. He is already in her office. This is the first time that she is meeting this guy. So she, <laughs> I love this. She's not happy. You can see that already in this look. Looks around, what has he touched? What has he done? Looks around. Then, ah, and I love this. This is again, why I love props. The way she takes this out, <clears throat> there's a certain aggressiveness and frustration in this. Yes, she's already selling it in this, but you could have a bigger accent than with this. And then he hears that kind of, all right, well, hi, I'm such and such. And he goes, oh, okay, well, what are you doing here? And then this is what I'm gonna show you. This is your, and I've shown this a couple of times. This shows up in movies and other TV shows, a character that goes for handshake and the other character denies it. And then you got their reaction. And I like this, A, because, I mean, you can obviously do this. It's a, it's a very straightforward move and focus on that denial and then kind of the pantomime face or if there's audio of how a character reacts to this going okay and you can see this kind of a lowering of the shoulder here but i also like this just from an idea principle of a character starts an action and you know in the typical polite fashion she would shake his hand as well so this is a followed by b but if you deny b there's just something in the viewership where you go, oh, that's interesting. It, this is not what I was expecting. So this is like the main idea and principle behind it all, where you start with a move and the audience expects a specific outcome and you don't give the audience that outcome that could be potentially interesting. This actually continues in the sequence as well. He is again in their office looking at this. She comes in, holds coffee here, and realizes, oh, this guy again is in here. And he says, good morning. And you can see, I love this. Good morning. <laughs> 
it's this. It's, again, it's the kind of variation of a handshake. If someone says good morning, then you will probably look at that person, right? And say good morning too. But if you go and you look away and you go morning, really looking away, that's not super polite unless, there, of course, there's something distracting and there's a whole point of looking away. But usually you will look the person in the eye. So that's kind of the variation of the handshake. Again, you expect something, but then that's kind of the difference in terms of looking away, change of focus. <laughs> and then he goes, all right, well, is that coffee? I got you coffee. And it's the same thing here where he kind of extends it to her. It's like, well, if you want two, I got one for you. And she doesn't take it. And then he got that frustration there. But the cool thing is this continues on. And he says, all right, can we just reset this? So he wants to start over with the, hi, I'm new to all this. Why don't you respect me as a partner? Let's just work together. And this is awesome. Just her reaction to all of this. She goes, whatever. I, all those little head shakes. I love this here. Just that little, uh, that little jaw move here. He keeps explaining what is going on, what he wants this relationship to be. She's on the case all the time. Like she is the main person. <laughs> you can see the frustration. The looks over, like, oh, really, really? He's still talking. All right, let me look up. But then he continues explaining what's going on. And then she's starting to get this a bit more interested. You can see this here. Beep, just that it's a little puppy tilt right from here to here. It's not much animation wise, but it gives you something from static to OK, I'm interested. And it's even broken up by a blink. It's like I'm listening. All right, wheels are turning. I'm changing my mind. Blink to a different state of mind into that. And then as he continues, like, all right, let's do this, let's do this. And even she kind of agrees, like, okay. And that's the thing of you can you can pantomime what you're going to say earlier. I've, I've said, I've talked about this before in different clips where she goes, okay. And you don't have to nod when you say, okay. It can be earlier. It can be a no, it can be a yes or whatever. That anticipates this. And I like that just because it's kind of the, the breakup from the expected. You think yes would be clear not, but she does it beforehand. And then when he realizes, oh, okay, he has that kind of relaxed lean back. But before that, he was pitching things, potentially leaning forward a bit. And he can relax because, oh, she said, okay, well, let me lean back. I like this. Again, it's, it's subtle. It's just a slight shift here. Watch his upper body and back a little, okay. <laughs> and then her like, whatever. And I, this is so good. Let's go here frame by frame. You can see the raise of the eyebrows, widening of the eyes, whatever. Just kind of one hand gesture, leaning over. It's so great. And then as he does this, he goes, all right, let's start over. Here's, this is my name. Let's shake hands. And I love that he's just, it's just so cute. It's come on, come on. And I love that little gesture. It's right slightly off screen here. Come on, come on. And that actually breaks the ice. And goes, are you kidding me? Okay. But it's such a specific thing that she even looks at it throughout the whole time. It's just a great moment of, of just his character and, and their relationship. This is a great example for contrast in character posing. I can't really play the whole thing. If I play the whole thing here, I will get copyright strike and all kinds of stuff. But just look at shoulder up, arms crossed. This is the interrogation thing. There's the outfits and the way they look and how lower she is in frame. She's kind of almost bundle up hiding and kind of closer to the lower edge here to hide. Then you have her much higher. She does a lot of eyebrows and squinting, a lot of stuff like that with the nose, which is really cute. She's got different characters. She's, she's a lot more polite. She's a lot more straightforward. I highly recommend you watch this, the sequence there. It's so good. Then it continues on with her. She's a bit more static, but a lot more looking with eyes. You can see this here, lots of little more nervous blinks. She doesn't say anything until the end. But then it continues on. You can see these different characters, how they react. And I love this here too. The lean kind of way, his face, <laughs> such a great stare. And this continues on as they have, I love this too, that your character could have that pose throughout the shot. Just having the hand back there, why not? And with him like this, playing with this, kind of distracted. You can see that those witnesses, what they say is not really helpful. But again, it continues on. And as you continue, there's a new character in. I love that, just the way he looks. Again, she does a lot of that through there. If your character has those shapes, it's interesting. Just the contrast in all those characters. Again, she's lower. And at one point, they ask about a, gun a gunshot. And you can see here the different ways of saying no. Of that little going back with the chin, you no. And then him almost swiveling no with the chair. 
a bit more relaxed. No, no, no. And it continues on here. It's a bit of a more pronounced, oh, for sure, no. And you can see how she, again, because she's so active in her shapes, it even starts with eyebrows first. <gasps> like Almost like she heard the question goes, oh, no, 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 no. And then she goes, no, no, no. And you can see that widening of eyes and then the straightening and all those different ones. I love that, that she's doing with the hand here. And then her again, it's not huge. Just a bit, no. He goes, what? It's just great. I love that face. It's just a really great contrast of so many different characters. So once again, if you have multiple characters, think about that. Think about how is their posture? How do they lean? Are they higher in frame or not? Is that important or not? Would they be centered or a bit more to the side? And if you have multiple characters in the same frame, again, is that something that's important? Is this something of interest you can add by the contrast of posing? This one is short and sweet just because she's getting ready for a date. And I love this little thing here. She kind of has a sniffing arm, <laughs> armpit sniff test, which I will admit I do sometimes if I wear a shirt around the house, I do a little armpit sniff test. Mm, can I still wear this today? TMI. And then there's this. I just like that as a character thing. So obviously there's no lip sync. There's nothing. I mean, obviously you can't hear anything. I turned the sound off, but there's no lip sync. She's preparing herself. And that's just something to think about. Is your character walking from A to B? Those are awesome A's from A to B with my awesome arrow. What is the character going to do? Is that something? Is the character really caring about being neat? So on the A to B path, readjusting something that was just off for a moment, adjusting maybe the frame or just whatever you do. Like your character going somewhere can still be filled with all kinds of personality and character traits. And last but not least, this is the moment here i love this anybody who has kids you know that you can clean your house or apartment whatever you have you will always find kids toys somewhere and i love this idea in terms of set dressing so you put your character into an environment just to make it more interesting for interaction giving it context or stuff to do and then you can put in toys like that it gives us a you know it could be maybe like it's even like a super wealthy house nice and clean and you know paintings all kind of stuff but throughout you'll just see kids toys peppered because as a parent they're just going to be everywhere i have that stuff everywhere here i even keep this here all the time and my little one he made me a long time ago a little heart and I just, I just keep we always have stuff here from the kids so that's something for you to think about if you do put your character in an environment maybe you want to just kind of subtly hint that the person is a parent or a caretaker or something and then put that stuff there in the set just give it like an extra layer of texture and and just atmosphere and feel and maybe something for the character to interact with to look at and so on and speaking of look at that this is a very straightforward segue if you want me to look at your shots if you like this and, and think that's interesting I can take those ideas and principles and help you with your shots to make your shots even more awesome and that is the pitch for my workshop so you can sign up at any time you can start at any time link in the description and all the information of course and that is that it's the end thank you for watching till the very end as always i appreciate your time and if you don't want to miss any of these feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss any of my uploads and that is that so thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next upload